Okay, um, good morning. Uh, my name is Edward van Os. I'm senior researcher, inclusive education. Uh, welcome to this third multi inclusive webinar. This one is organized uh, by research group Inclusive Education of the Hague University of Applied Sciences. Uh, we proudly present you today's program. Well, first, uh, the intro and welcome. Uh, after that, uh, Dr. Aminata Cairo, Lecturer of Research Group Inclusive Education, will introduce the research group, the Hang In There project, and the ideas behind it. Thirdly, we will switch to the project itself, which is led by the student branch of the research group. Researchers Karim Laito and Hanna Boekestein will inform you about this and will demonstrate the website. Rudy and Maria will share their experiences with you as participating students. After that, Winnie will share the experiences, findings and revenues with you, as well as future plans about expansion and upscaling. Then we will have a plenary Q&A round in which the presenters will try to answer some of your questions. We hope that you understand that we will be able to respond to all of them Please use chat to type your questions during the presentations. Some of the presenters may ask you questions as well. After that, we will close the webinar with some concluding words by the hosts. Now I give the floor to Wotte Zelstra. Yes, and I'm Wotte Zelstra. Hello. Uh, welcome uh, to uh, the webinar, Hang In There. Uh, the Power of Storytelling in Creating Sense of Belonging, hosted by the Hague University of Applied Science in the Netherlands. I am Walter Zelstra and I'm the project coordinator of the Erasmus Plus project Multi-Include. One of the aims of this project is to collect 70 educational inclusive cases from kindergarten to higher education. By analyzing these cases, we try to identify the enablers and disablers for developing inclusive educational strategies in all sectors of the pathways to higher education. One of the cases we detected, we, we detected is Hang In There. This case will be the subject of this webinar. You will meet Aminata Cairo of the Hague University of Applied Science. She is our professor in inclusive education. She will reflect on the theoretical framework of Hang In There. You will also meet my colleagues Vinnie Rozeval, Hanna Boekestein and Karim Leito, who are involved in the Hang In There practice. And our student Rudy van der Beek, who will reflect on the student experience. The multi include project is a European project with seven partners. And I will show these partners now. So I have to share my screen. And do you see it? Yep. Yeah. So these are the seven partners. Echo, Center of Expertise, uh, Diversity uh, Policy uh, from the Netherlands. I hear an iPhone from Herman. <laughs> uh, Kinder Uni Wien from Austria. ESHA, the European School Heads Association, also located in the Netherlands. Di Scola from Italy. The Knowledge Innovation Center from Malta. Melmo University from Sweden. And of course, the Hague University of Applied Science, who is hosting this seminar. We started. We started uh, the project in January 2018. And now we are able to actively disseminate our learnings. We created a learning community for practitioners, for policymakers, for managers of schools, for teachers of schools, of universities, and other organizations who are involved in the area of inclusive education. And in September, we will launch a MOOC on this topic. We will invite you all to participate. 
information about the learning community, the MOOC, the webinars you can find on our website www.multiincludes.eu. We are happy that you decided to join this webinar. I wish you an interesting hour. Please feel welcome to make comments and ask questions during the webinar. My colleague Edward and I will guide you through the program. Chapitre suivant, qui va consister à vous dire un Inclusive education for me, it's when the student is the center of everything. They have lots of responsibilities and they are creating their own comfortable environment. Okay, we're starting an open culture, and it's really cool. If it's not working, but it's good of respect. Dat, um, dat er een open cultuur ontstaat waardoor studenten en medewerkers, docenten, dit soort gesprekken kunnen hebben over wat betekent inclusief voor henzelf. Voor mij, voor iedereen te voelen welkom en voor iedereen te voelen included hier in de Hague University. First of all, the language that people are using needs to be understandable for everyone. Dan denk ik aan een standaardisatie, dan denk ik aan uniformiteit, dan denk ik uh, uh, dat er bepaalde vaste richtlijnen zijn zoals we met elkaar om moeten kunnen gaan. En dat is het ook voor iedereen duidelijk. En dan hoort iedereen erbij. Well, um, my whole point is that you, the more students you include uh, into the decision making of this uh, university, they, the more uh, included they feel into the university itself. Ik maak je schoon als je een kamer ingaat, je bullenbakje leegt en de tafel schoonmaakt en weer wegloopt. Dan ben jij geen onderdeel. Maar als je elke ochtend een kamer binnenkomt, goeiemorgen, hallo, hoe is het ermee, goed ik het gehad, dan heb je meer contact. En als jij alleen maar je eigen lijf hebt en verder geen contact met de mensen maakt, dan ben je geen onderdeel. Het derde kunnen we beginnen met. Um, now we will uh, introduce Aminata Cairo. Aminata, can we begin as a spray? You're on screen. Good morning. My name is Aminata Kaira and I'm the lecturer of inclusive education. And I'm very happy to be here with you this morning and to share with you a little bit about who we are and the work that we do with the Hang In There project. So to tell you a little bit about the lecturate, what we are, we are a research group. And we are dedicated to uh, spending our time developing knowledge that can contribute to creating an inclusive learning and working environment for everybody that comes through here, that works here, and in particular for our students so that they can get the best out of their educational experience. And the way we have our research group set up, we have it divided into actually like three branches. So one is our center uh, knowledge circle, as we call them. And we are dedicated to, again, generating knowledge as a And we are focused on how will we uh, share this information with our constituents. And even though we work collectively as a group, in addition, we also have our individual interests that we pursue. In addition to that, we have a group of affiliates. And these are a group of people who are uh, already working on individual projects, mostly uh, like PhD programs, uh, projects and such. And then thirdly, we have a student branch. And the student branch is what we will be focusing on today. So our student branch consists of a group of junior researchers. You will see them in just a minute. And they are dedicated specifically to the voice of our students. Because if we're saying that we want to create an inclusive learning environment, then it is important that we include our students in that process. They have to be center in this process. So our student branch is dedicated to research um, that involves our students directly. Uh, it works with students on research projects that have to do with this subject. And also we work directly with student mobilization. So how can we get students involved? How can we get them to use their voice uh, and to express their needs and to work on those needs uh, jointly with us? Um, again, to contribute to this idea of an inclusive learning environment. 
So that's a little bit about uh, you know, our research group and what we stand for. And then if you don't mind, and I will continue straight on to Hang In There project. So the Hang In There project is one of the projects uh, that has been come forth out of our student research branch. And this Hang In There project is based on research from University of Texas, Austin and Stanford University. In particular, it's based on the work of uh, Walton, uh, let me pull it up here, Walton, Jaeger, uh, Cohen and Dweck. And this work focuses on two parts. On the one hand, it's based into social psychology. And on the other hand, specifically, it focuses on the concept of growth mindset. And so from social psychology research, we have learned uh, that we don't just need to look at academic content when it comes to study success, but also psychologically at what our students go through and how strong they feel when it comes to participating and being confident in pursuing the work. And so they started their research looking in particular at vulnerable uh, populations, students who are more likely to drop out. And what they found is that even though students are academically and intellectually quite capable, a lot of times they're very insecure. And so what happens is they come in and they encounter some kind of a setback and they see it as an affirmation. See, I don't belong here or see, I cannot do this work. And consequently, they disappear or they drop out. So that's something that they chose to focus on. And so what they did is they, in, they looked at this concept of growth mindset and they did several studies where they introduced this concept of giving this message that yes, it is hard, but yes, you can overcome it. And so did research where they implemented programs, short, simple interventions. They applied it to all students uh, where they got a message about this idea of growth mindset. And then they gave them the opportunity to work with that message for themselves, but also to pass that message on to another group of students. And they found that it was very effective. It was effective for everybody. It was helpful to everybody, but it was effective specifically for those students that were at risk of dropping out. So based on that story, based on that research, we decided uh, to do a similar uh, program. And so our context is a little bit different. Um, first of all, this research is based in the US, and so it was the target populations was mainly African-American, low-income African-American and Latino students. Uh, our population uh, target is, first of all, very different, mm -hmm. but also our context is different. When it comes to inclusive education, it is still a difficult subject. It's still a difficult topic. And so for us to address inclusive education or inclusive learning environments, part of our endeavor is to include everybody and to promote a kind of normalcy and to promote a sense of comfortability even in terms of dealing with this subject. And so rather than focusing on the research aspect, we started first making it an intervention and so that people can touch it, they can feel it, we can try it and we can create some sense of ownership when it comes to this program. So what we have done uh, in comparison again to the uh, American counterpart and the American counterpart, the students got to read a story uh, about growth mindset and then they had to work with that. What we did, we also collected stories, but we collected stories of the students themselves. And so we got videos of those stories where students shared their stories about uh, difficulties they encountered and the fact that they were able to overcome them. That's step one. And then further, the students, again, get to internalize that message because we start asking them questions after seeing the videos. What are some things that you struggle with? What are some things that you, um, you know, have your doubts about? And then the third part is then we get them to work with that message. So then we ask them, based on the videos that you have seen, can you please uh, write a message of encouragement for the next cohort of, of students? And so that. Uh, that aspect mirrors, again, uh, the project in the U.S., where, again, you get the message, you internalize it, and then you have to work with it. So that's really all I want to share uh, about this project, is I'd rather have my junior researchers and the, the members of the student branch share with you, them, you, know, with you personally how they have um, worked this project, how they have created it. Uh, again, I want to say right now we're in the phase that we have just started it. We have a few number. Um, of stories. Uh, we starting to get it out there, starting to create familiarity, starting to involve uh, teachers and staff as far as how can we work with this information and 
uh, also recruiting more students. And then in the future, we want to expand it more. But again, they will share all of that with you personally. I will not take that away from them. And that will be my contribution for now. Thank you very much, uh, Aminata, for this uh, brief introduction. Thank you, Aminata, for enlightening us behind, uh, about the ideas behind the initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, our next presentation is about the initiation of the project, okay. which is led by the student branch of the research group. Hannah Boekestein and uh, Karim Leito will tell you about it, and Rudy van der Beek will shine his light upon the student's perspective. They'll be right here. Yeah. Yes, can we? Yes. All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good night, everybody. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Karim Leito, and I'm a junior researcher at the Lectorate for Interest Education. And together with Hannah, I work on the student branch. Yes. Well, my name is Hannah Bukestein. I'm also a junior researcher at the student branch. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about the process of the project, um, difficulties we encountered, and then we will we'll also share the website with you and one or two videos of the participants. All right, so I'm going to go into a bit of how we recruited students. Um, I'll walk you all through that process. Um, at the beginning, we had two ways of approaching this. So we, the first was we actually walked through the, the Hague University building and approach random students and ask if they wanted to participate in our Hanging Day project. The second approach was um, worked more like a snowball effect where we asked students who have who we've been in touch with if they know other students who might be interested to participate and share their stories in the Hanging Day project. So it's kind of like a mouth-to-mouth a -mouth, um, um, sharing of, of the project. Um, then we, I will tell you a bit more about how we prepared the students. So every student that we approached, we had a preliminary conversation with to explain to them um, what is expected from them in the Hang In There project and what it means to commit to the project. Uh, this was also to make sure that students who participate are aware of what they're committing to, but more importantly, to take care of their well-being because we are indeed asking them to share some very personal stories and that we also want to take care that, um, yeah, that they, they feel well doing that. Um, so the preliminary conversations uh, is really about how, how do we get the students to join. Um, during these conversations uh, with the students, we've learned that it's important to have a light and positive approach when asking students to share their personal stories. Um, at first, we put a bit too much focus on the psychologization of the struggles that students face during their studies which led to students kind of um, bailing out and not wanting to participate because we had a bit of a heavy tone to um, the sharing of the stories. Um, we learned from that and we think it's very important to have a, a rather light, empowering approach to encourage students um, to share their stories um, because we think there's two, two reasons that we wanna focus on why it's important for students to share their stories. One of them is, um, if, if students share their stories themselves, they can contribute to the normalization about speaking, uh, about speaking of the difficulties that they face during their studies. Um, we often see that students, it's, it's a bit of a taboo. So we, wanna, we want them to kind of like, you know, that it becomes normal that you, that you encounter struggles and that it's okay to talk about it. Um, second is students can become a peer who empower other students by sharing how they've overcome the difficulties uh, that they encounter during their, their, their study programs. Um, so really this peer-to-peer, -peer, um, this peer-to-peer -peer empowering of, of each other. Um, after all, almost everybody encounters difficulties at some point during their studies and hang in there thereby focuses on the daily issues that students encounter um, instead of only highlighting success stories of some students as inspiration. We really wanna use, to normalize it that it's okay. Yeah, you know, everybody faces um, difficulties and, and that it's okay to really engage in conversation about these. Um, I will now hand the floor to Hannah who will discuss more about the underlying assumptions and challenges. Yeah, thank you. 
Well, the foundation of Hang In There is students sharing their stories. Um, so the main question we encountered was, how can we facilitate the students sharing their story? Uh, and as Karim said before, uh, we have noticed that the positive angle um, is really important during the preliminary, preliminary um, conversations, but, uh, but throughout the whole process. Um, and if we focus a bit on the recruitment phase, there are some practical aspects uh, to take into consideration. Um, we have noticed that uh, if you have student pioneers who can function as a link between the students and the project, um, it works effectively, more effectively than without. Um, and we can also use the mentors of the students um, the, Identifying and recruiting students who can benefit from the support that being in there has to offer. Um, the students who benefit from being in there are potentially all students. No, but I can just say that as soon as that project is done, I will not have to do anything. I will give them the force. So, I will give them the force to do something. And I will give them the force. Now. I think there's a microphone on somewhere. I think it's a problem. Perché il webinar è questo scenario online perché tu parli, poi gli altri ti fanno le domande. Hola, signor. Ok, I will continue. Um, so as I was saying, the students that benefit from this initi initiative is potentially all students, but especially students who are at risk of dropping out the first 100 days of their studies. Um, but that's enough talking, so let's show the website. Uh, you go here? Yeah. And you have to share the screen here, yeah? Yeah, on the desk. FL. FL. I'm sorry, so check this one. This one. Yeah. 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 So as you can see, this is the front page of the website. Then you scroll down, you see the five stories uh, of different students. Um, that are pioneers in our projects. Uh, I will show you first the story of Giorgio and then the story of Rudy, uh, who is also joining us today and he will speak a bit about his experience about being a participant and hanging there. Let's see if it works. The sound of the video is not working. I will pause it then and show you another video which has English subtitles. Which is your video. Okay. 
I am sure that you will send to that. It is Mr. Prabhu. So maybe, um, uh, Hannah, maybe you can share us uh, a bit about the first video because the sound was not very much. Maybe you can tell us uh, what, what did he say? Yeah, so this is uh, Giorgio and he's a student from St. Martin and he speaks about that when he came here to study, uh, the difficulties he encountered was both the language barrier, he didn't speak fluent Dutch, yet his study was in Dutch and that he had to find a balance between uh, his social life, hanging with his friends, and having enough time to study. Um, this is what he speaks about, and I think... And how did he overcome these uh, struggles? So he, uh, the Dutch part was uh, <coughs> speaking more often and, and uh, practicing more, uh, and with his friends he says that he um, he engaged in a conversation with them um, and he told them like i still want to hang out with you but i cannot hang out as much because i also have to study uh, and then at the end he says if you have to lose some friends to study <laughs> it is worth it because this is uh, for your future um, yeah are all those students uh, who are in they hang in uh, their project uh, with those videos. Uh, they all have a growth mindset because Aminata, she said the th theory of the growth mindset is one of the foundations of this project. How can you see that they have a growth mindset? I think the, that's a really interesting question because mm. you speak about that at first they didn't have a growth mindset and then they encounter the difficulties and see how they overcome them, uh, mostly by uh, allowing themselves to get help from uh, from mentors or from uh, fellow students um, and that is how they uh, grew this <laughs> growth mindset so it's more like uh, during the process uh, uh, of helping and, 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 and facing the, 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 the struggles they, they develop their cells a growth mindset yes yes <clears throat> okay thank you please continue no problem. So I will um, scroll quickly to the website because the this is the front page as I already said. If the student who watches has seen the videos, you can either go into the Dutch version or the English version. We'll use the English one. Uh, click here to fill in a short survey. Sorry for the wait. Computer is a bit slow. Computer says no. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same with technology, isn't it? <coughs> there it is. Okay, so the first questions are a bit general and we wanted to uh, have very few questions to keep it short and light. So we ask them what they study, their email address and which year, which videos did they watch, and then we have a couple of questions about the uh, content of the uh, stories. Uh, for example, name two things that affected you the most from the videos. Uh, what obstacles and difficulties are you most afraid of? And then also to write a brief letter to future first students on how to overcome difficulties and obstacles. And this is a question uh, specifically um, focused for the, on the growth, on growing a growth mindset. We'll use question five and six uh, as uh, data to um, support these students during the year because we sent them personal messages about this, like how, how they are doing. Um, and uh, if you click finish for survey, you're done, but I think we need to go back. So you, you uh, emphasize that the, the survey is light and short and light and also Aminata said uh, uh, your, your approach is not too heavy because why is that? Why, why do you emphasize that it's light? Yeah, because we want to contribute to normalization of encountering difficulties during your study. Um, 
because everyone encounters difficulties at some point. Um, but that's a part of, of studying and you can also overcome them. And by realizing this, you get, um, you become a more strong individual, so to say. So that's because you want to normalize the, 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 the troubles, uh, the, what they face. Yes, yes, to normalize speaking about it, to know that you're not alone as a student and to not see it as <laughs> or as a giant setback. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, now I will introduce to you a student who participated in this project, Rudy. And I think I need to go here. Should stop sharing. Yes, sir. I think there's a microphone on. Could it be muted? Unmute, on. Maybe on mute. So the students need to come. Yes. Yes. We're back. Okay. Cool. So let me introduce you, Rudy. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> you are a student uh, who participated in our project. Yes. Um, and I would like to ask you three questions about um, the project and your experiences. Yes. And the first question is, what's your motivation to participate in hanging that? Yes, um, I was asked actually, I saw um, that some people from the lecturehouse were filming other students uh, for the recording um, in their project and I engaged into a conversation about what was going on and at the moment I was active in the university council of the university and um, my own background is that I'm a um, first generation student um, where university, where the first year was quite challenging and um, not, uh, there weren't many peers of, um, in the higher education uh, for me to have to sort, sort of guideline to my study. Um, so you have to develop and you have to discover a lot of things yourself. Mm. That's um, many cases for many first generation students, mm. um, sometimes with an immigrant background where sometimes university is a new challenge with many obstacles. Like going to university is one thing, but uh, hanging in there is another thing. Yeah. So I thought that if I can contribute in a way that I, will, uh, that I would be happy to contribute. Yes, yes. So um, by sharing your story, you would yes. become an inspiration for the future students or the students who are interested. Yes. In okay, that's great. And um, because we talked before about um, the preliminary conversations and the tricky parts of, of these conversations, I would like to ask you, what is your experiences with the preliminary conversations? you had with the student branch? It was a very open conversation. Uh, they first spoke of what the purpose of what the, of the project was, mm -hmm. uh, about how they want to accomplish by reaching more students and which format we'll have, such as the videos and the interviews. Mm -hmm. And um, it resonated with me. I thought it would, would be very useful to uh, send out the message to uh, first-year students of the future, especially when um, I was told about the first 100 days that many students drop out in the first 100 days. I wasn't aware of that. Therefore, um, I thought it also would be a very added value for first-year students. So yeah. I enjoyed the preliminary conversations. I thought it was very useful so I could get more information on what the foremost of the project and how um, I could contribute further to the project. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, and my last question, and maybe others ha also have questions. Um, but my last question is, uh, what can hang in there do to have a bigger impact? Well, sometimes I think that um, it currently is on a website, uh, not a university website. Sometimes I think that maybe the screens in a university can be used, that um, more students can be... In the hallway, you yes, know, in the yes. screens. I mean, I think it's very good that it's posted, for example, on the Instagram, because students are more active on social media these days than just on a student portal. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, by using... Um, new media, social media, for example, <coughs> used as a way to reach more students. I do think, by the way, that it's a good thing that uh, everything has subtitles, because not everyone speaks Dutch, and not every Dutch 
is comfortable enough with, uh, with understanding English for well So I think it's yeah. good that everything is subtitled. Yeah. Uh, but I think that social media can be used in a way to reach more students. Okay. Thank Rudy, you. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Uh, uh, what were the uh, reactions, response of your friends or students around you on your video? Did you get uh, responses? Uh, yes. Well, I'm most responses are uh, students who aren't first years anymore because um, um, I'm not a first year as anymore as well. So many students were positive and they um, recognized that some of them also missed um, some sort of a peer in a higher year to get into the study. Mm -hmm. uh, small things which can contribute to... Um, in the first year you get some information from your program, but it's mainly based on just a studying. Sometimes, and there's also some sorts of skills you can receive which aren't always in like how to hang in there and I think that uh, those things uh, if you teach them from a peer can be um, more convincing and more resonating so um, the many comments I received from fellow students were positive and that they wish they would uh, be there in the first years as well and did you also get negative reactions <clears throat> no no great <laughs> Oh, someone said I had to shave, but that's it. But <laughs> for the video, but that's it. Yeah. Um, uh, I I have a reaction here. Uh, yes. Really, thank you for your video. Nice story. Thank Did you. Did the project bring you uh, other things than helping others? More awareness of your own strategies. Yes. Yes. Uh, I must say that since last academic year, I think we started last academic year. Uh, they may think. It made myself think of um, uh, current first years because I wasn't I wasn't always fully aware of um, how my first year went. Of course, I thought about it sometimes, but not in within that context. And also how, uh, for example, uh, peer to peer mentoring or how um, hearing stories from your peers can contribute to um, a better study time. A uh, funny coincidence is uh, I spoke to a current first year yesterday. I tried to convince her to do the intro week, and she was like, why would I do the intro week? And I said, because um, um, not many students like you do the intro week, and if you have a big contribution in that intro week instead of only the teachers, then um, it may have a bigger impact on a student if they also um, hear your story about your program, because your story resonates more within some the future first years than the story of teacher number X who tells about his or her profession or background. So I try to, um, lately I've been trying to, for example, trying to motivate more students to do, for example, an intro week. So uh, first years can play a bigger impact within the next intro week to make sure that students feel more at home from the first day. So you actively uh, try to, to uh, bring the stories in several events uh, in university, not only in hand there. Yes. This was a question of uh, Sophie Smates. I hope Sophie, uh, uh, did you get your answer? Maybe you can uh, put in the chat uh, uh, if you are, uh, if your answer, if, if it's answers uh, satisfied. Uh, did you, did you? Yes, please continue. Thank you very much, says uh, Sophie. <laughs> Does it work additionally? Oh. Yeah, so I think this was uh, uh, our part of the story actually. Okay. okay, well, thank you very much, Hannah, Karim, and Rudy. Thanks for having me. For demonstrating how the initiative works and how it already found its, has found its place at the Hague University. Yeah. Uh, in the next presentation, we will elaborate on the findings and revenues of the project up to now and examine future possibilities for expanding and upscaling. Bini Rooseveld, researcher and coordinator, will tell you all about it. Hi. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Hi. Good to have Hi. you here. Um, so, uh, I'm going to give you an insight uh, in the experiences and findings up to now. Um, I'm going to uh, tell you something about our expectations for the future and we're going to 
and I'm going to talk you through some of the ideas we have um, to expand the program. And I hope that that's the space where uh, you can give your um, creative ideas on how to do that. So we've heard uh, Rudy talked about his experiences as a participant in, in the project. And he is one of the five students uh, who were brave enough to tell his story on a camera because he wanted to normalize the fact that studying can be difficult at some point and uh, as an inspiration for other students, new generations. But besides those five students we recorded, we aim to reach other students and I want to tell something about those findings. Since we launched the project in October, uh, we tried to reach as much first year students but also other students as possible. And the researchers from the Lectorate Inclusive Education, who are also teachers, introduced the program with their students. Um, we also had an announcement at our University of Applied Sciences website, and we gave some presentations to create awareness about uh, uh, the hang in there. Karim and Hannah, or Hannah showed the, the website already and the survey. Um, and um, the survey is what we ask the students to fill in after uh, watching uh, the videos. Um, I'm going to share some of the results uh, from those surveys. And still we're like in a, in a pilot phase, so um, uh, it's not the final analysis of the, of the data. But these are some of the first uh, findings. So from the visitors who filled in the survey, 80% uh, are first year students. The other 20% that filled in the questionnaire are from second year students up to, um, yes, students who already study for more than five years. Um, the studies that the visitors are in are very diverse. So it's from social work to European studies, international public management, and pedagogical studies. And it's striking that 30% of the students uh, who filled in the, the, the questionnaire, the survey, are students from uh, pedagogical studies. At the other hand, um, that's easy to explain because some of our uh, members of the, of the uh, lectorate are uh, teaching at pedagogical studies. Um, and they introduced this program with their, uh, with their students. So the data or the information we uh, got up till now um, from the surveys is not fully analyzed yet. I, I just uh, said that. But I do want to give you uh, some examples of the answers we received from our students um, to illustrate uh, what their experiences are at the Hague University of Applied Sciences. So first we asked the students to reflect on what they've seen by asking two things that affected the most from the videos. Uh, students respond on that question with that uh, being away from family affected, um, that the language barriers that was talked about in the video is affected. So uh, you just saw Giorgio, or maybe you didn't hear him, but Hannah explained the language barriers uh, affected the students who filled in the, the uh, survey. Um, also, in other videos, there's uh, a student who's talking about the trends transfer from secondary vocational education to the University of Applied Sciences. That's also, uh, also a point that uh, the students who filled in for uh, the survey uh, found uh, affected, or, or sorry, affected the most. Uh, losing the overview, I have it here on my paper, so I have to read it. Uh, losing friendships to spend time studying, uh, and that another culture means adapting really fast. And mostly, um, uh, most of the students um, were affected by the carrying through from the students in videos. And these are just some, some examples. What is interesting is that the answers on the next question uh, in the survey, what obstacles and difficulties are you most afraid of, in some cases are similar to their answer on what affected them. So like it's some sort of a projection or a reflection or uh, maybe uh, something that resonates because um, it's uh, it's, it resonates within themselves. So for example, the student uh, who wrote that planning is one of the things that affects them most from the videos answered on the following questions, uh, that the amount of studying and walking behind with everything and filling classes because of not managing time well enough was one of the things that he, she or them uh, is afraid of. The student who was mostly affected by the language barrier that was talked about in video answered that failing, speaking and writing in Dutch and homesickness are the obstacles and difficulties he or them is the most afraid of. 
This isn't the case with all the participants, but it is something that catches the eye with our first analysis. So in most of the cases, something from the video resonates when this is something the participants or visitors are struggling with or are afraid of. The last step in the survey is that the student write a brief letter on how to overcome difficulties and obstacles. And before I go on to your ideas on how to make this program more sustainable, I want to share some of uh, those inspirational notes from peers to new generation students. And um, I have, I'm going to share it in a presentation with you because I'm going to read it, but I think it's easier if you can read along with me. So I have to... Do you see it? Yes. So one of the students wrote, Hey dearest, new study year seems a lot to handle, but it seems like that only in the beginning. If you manage your time and do everything in time, there will be no problems. I know it seems easy to say, but I have gone through the same thing and I survived. Just try to enjoy and have the best time while you have and prepare yourself because university will be good to you if you are good to her. Oh, and I now see that it's twice in the text. So this was uh, the first message. The other one is a uh, dear up and coming professional. Being a student can be overwhelming. So many new faces, so much information, and that much ambition to accomplish your goals. Not to mention getting a grip of what teachers want from you and a continuous pressure to excel. First and foremost, you are really not alone. Talking about your troubles can help you connect to people in ways you've never thought were possible. It may sound paradoxical, but common fears usually form the best basis for friendship. When you have overcome your fear, wear that fear like a badge of honor. Keep talking about it. You may not know it that minute, but you may just be enough to save someone from a gloomy day. Sometimes friendship may not be enough. Go to a pro and start healing yourself. Finish that treatment and come out of it as a better person. How do I know all of this? Because I have been right where you are, feeling as uh, though I never would succeed at anything. Things are still uncertain, and that may be the modus operandi we all have to accept. But my support system and I will get there. I think in a way my troubles may be the reason for it, not what is keeping me back. My troubles are my boom, not my downfall. I don't know you, but know that I deeply care for you and wish you all possible love in the world. Kind regards. Okay, now I have to get It's a great uh, story, uh, brief uh, letter. Uh, Bibi. Uh, <laughs> other, other students uh, read those uh, comments, uh, read those letters uh, on the website? Um, no. Because I can imagine that it's very nice to read these sorts of uh, letters. So the next step of the program is that we collect stories and we use them to um, uh, to send them to the people, the first year students, but all the people who um, gave in their email address when they um, uh, fill in the survey, um, we, can, we can send them those messages. So that's like the next step in the hang in there. So after they filled in the, the, the survey, uh, every once in a while we send them messages and we use those messages the students wrote themselves to, um, to yeah, in, inspire or support um, <coughs> the people who want to. So with hanging hang in there, you are sort of creating a, a community yeah. between yeah. students and also teachers are involved because teachers are introducing this program uh, to their classes, to their, to their students. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, how many students responded to the videos on the hang in there website? This is a question from uh, uh, someone uh, who is uh, participating in the webinar. Yes, I don't have the exact uh, exact amount, um, but we're like somewhere in the uh, 40 now. 40. Yes. So uh, it's, it's a pilot, it's small yet. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to, uh, uh, you're going to grow this uh, program to, to yes. make it bigger. Because, uh, what are your experiences? Uh, in, uh, uh, what do the teachers, they, they, they introduce this to their classes? Do they have conversations about it? What, what, what are the experiences of the conversation uh, because of this program? Well, um, there, the conversations the, the teachers have with their students is mostly um, about how, how to uh, fill in the form, how to watch the video. So it's, it's not yet a, um, 
implemented in the in the classes. So only our uh, members of the lecturer are using it with their students, and they like to reflect on uh, on the videos. They like to reflect on on themselves because that's also what they have to do with those few questions, and. Um, the responses we get from the messages we send afterwards are really nice because people are really willing to have a conversation about what they're going through. So um, that's one of the things we want to expand in the in the future. So maybe that's a good thing to proceed with that. Is that an answer? Yes. Um, uh, what are your next steps? Yes. Okay. Um, the next steps, we want to expand the program, we, um, uh, but because our ambition with the program is real, really big, um, we want to uh, reach all first year students in the next academic year. So for that we, are, um, we have a meeting the 26th of June with the coordinators of the study career coaches. And the study career coaches are uh, teachers who are um, supporting first year students, all year students, but first year students uh, uh, mostly. Uh, and we want to reach them because if they are willing to adopt this program and integrate it in their, um, in their classes, um, all the students are um, invited to look at the videos and uh, fill in the, the questionnaire reflect on the, on the videos, write some, uh, some positive notes for their uh, future students. So, so the universities have uh, about 7,000 students every year who are enrolled. How many of these students you want to, uh, to reach? That's, that's what we want. That's what we're, what we're aiming. But I think it's more, um, I think, yeah, if, if we reach 500 students next year, then I think we can analyze and uh, see what it does for them. If we can create a network, then we, um, yeah, because that's what we want. We want, so one of the other things we want to do to expand is to um, attract students who want to participate as a peer um, to do the conversations with the students, like in a, in some sort of a chat function on the website, so we have to uh, um, uh, professionalize the, the website, and, and we need students who wants to support us in the contact with the first year students. So, okay, uh, one of the participants uh, has a comment. Uh, yeah. This like an important and amazing program. Uh, if I were interested to implement a similar initiative at my institution. Would you like us to do so under the Hang In There umbrella or under a different name? Yeah, that's one of, uh, of course, uh, under Hang In There. We would love to uh, work with other uh, institutes, other educational uh, institutes, or maybe, because um, for us, the Hang In There, um, if it gets a place in different parts of the educational path, um, I think that would help in, in normalizing the, the difficulties and obstacles everything every student um, uh, run into once in a while. So uh, yeah, under the umbrella of the Hang In There, we would love to co-create co and, and work on that. So everybody who's interested in the program Hang In There, you can go to our website www.multiinclude.eu. There you can find uh, the case Hang In There. And uh, you also, uh, there's also information how to uh, yeah. read the persons uh, of this, uh, behind this uh, project. So maybe one thing to, 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 yeah. uh, to say, because um, now we're, aim we're focusing on first year students because we see that the first 100 days are very important. Um, but in the future, we want to implement this as well in transfer programs. So from um, uh, high schools or um, secondary, vocational education to uh, the University of Applied Sciences. Uh, there's this plan that we want to work with alumni. Um, so also at the, uh, at the end of, the, of their uh, study that, that students can see how it is to uh, work your first year. So th those are all kinds of, uh, kinds of plans we have to, to expand. Um, but I would love to hear if there are more ideas or uh, you can contact us uh, to talk about it. Yeah. Vini, uh, we have also a, a question from Minke. 
uh, what about students who think they have no story to share? Mm. They just share their email address to only receive stories from others. I can imagine having to write this letter can be a barrier to sign up. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a barrier, but um, uh, I don't see that. So that's m maybe like a, a, a missing link in, in our program, because if we invite students to participate, we cannot see, because we, we see that the videos are uh, watched more often than that people filled in the survey. There's, there might be something that um, maybe teachers need to sit next to them or um, and no, I want to say force them, but that's not the right. <laughs> the and I can imagine uh, the whole program uh, is founded on the theory of, of uh, uh, social psychology and growth mindset. Okay. So uh, you have to face barriers. So maybe uh, this is part of the process, uh, writing a letter to, yeah. to, to get a more growth mindset. Definitely, yeah. And people who think they don't have a story, I think everyone has a story. And sometimes you need more time to uh, reflect on it and to um, articulate your uh, your story. But I believe that everyone has story. So uh, support from a, a study career coach or something like that can help to uh, help the student articulate his or her story. Yeah. We have another question. Do you try to reach students who stopped the study? Now I see only successful students. Yeah. Uh, no, we haven't done that yet, but that's something to take in consideration. Um, this is not what the, the program is about, but it's really interesting to hear their story. Um, and maybe if they can reflect on the videos that are already there, or maybe we can reach some students who want to tell their uh, story and the reason why they uh, dropped out on camera, we can use that as well as a, as a, a part of uh, the expand, expansion. Uh, maybe you can uh, stop sharing your desktop because we, yeah. uh, we, 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 we How do I do this? PowerPoint still, yeah. <laughs> uh, are there other things you want to share with us, uh, Winnie? Uh, um, oh. oh. Other Sophie friends? <laughs> we have some comments. Uh, yeah. Great program, says Sophie's, and beautiful stories. Maybe different types <coughs> of engagement can help, like newbies just sign up to newsletter and other. Oh, yeah. yeah. On another question uh, from Eline, uh, Eline, Eline. Uh, we are also thinking to our study about something to so that sounds like this. It's okay. also inspired by an intervention about growth mindset in lay theory. Do you know that? The article, for example, uh, teaching a lay theory before college narrows achievement gaps and skills. Uh, no, I don't know this article, but I can check it later. I want to read about it because I think it's very interesting. Thank you for sharing, Eline. Uh, so, for <laughs> say, Sophie, thanks for the tip because I think it's, uh, the the different steps of engagement that that's something we can. Uh, implement easily in the program so that they don't have to do every step but only can sign up. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Eline says it's just for inspiration. Uh, you're welcome, says Sophie. Uh, so for a low to high involvement updates uh, slash support letter video, you get the idea. So uh, Sophie is also um, uh, giving Inspiration, thanks. Tips. That's great. That's uh, how a webinar should work. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Winnie, do you have some closing comments? Um, do I have some closing comments? I well, have a closing I question. But about, sorry? I have a closing question, but do you, uh, you go first? No, well, I think everything is said. Everything I wanted to share with you is said. I'm very happy with the engagement, so the, the inspiration you gave, so I'm I'm done. The one question, can you tell us why the name Hang In There? What is the idea between, behind Hang In There? Hang In There, okay. Well, um, Hang In There means even if it's rough or you're going through s stuff, hang in there. It's like what's that? That's what it means. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay uh, thank you, Winnie. You're welcome.
Although the, pro the project started only in September 2018, it looks very promising already. Uh, the next part of our webinar, and our last part, will be the Q&A rounds. Uh, what, uh, well, there, you, you shared questions. Are there any more questions from the audience? If there are more questions, you can uh, put it now because it's after 11 now, so we have come to a closure of this uh, webinar. Uh, we like to thank everybody who participated and uh, I think uh, the uh, Hang In There project is very promising uh, also because it's uh, founded on social psychological and, and, and growth uh, mindset. I think it's very important in universities that there is more attention uh, for the experiences of the students and not only for the academic uh, stuff. Um, so more room, more space for conversations uh, like this uh, is very welcome and I think that's very good uh, to prevent uh, dropouts. So thank you very much and uh, I think uh, uh, this is our webinar and if uh, there are questions afterwards please send it to us to uh, the project and I'm going to share uh, 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 my desktop for one more uh, uh, slides because, and this is uh, not the slide I wanted to show, but I want to show this. Um, if you uh, want to have more information about our project, please go to www.multiinclude.eu and join our learning community. We have the learning communities. You can join, you can make a profile yourself and meet other professionals who are involved in inclusive education. You can also follow us on Facebook, uh, join uh, the Ideas for Inclusion Education group. Uh, you can look at our archive uh, on the website and you find videos of previous webinars. We, had, we did uh, two webinars before this, but we also have another webinar in September. So please look at our website for the date because we, don't, we didn't set the date yet, but it is September, the fourth webinar uh, of this Scola. Uh, there's also a partner of us from Italy and they will share uh, uh, some cases from Italy uh, about inclusive education. We also are developing a MOOC uh, for if you have more interest, if you want to go deeper uh, in, in, in inclusive education. And we start our MOOC in September. So if you now sign up for our learning community, uh, then you get uh, all the information about the book. But if you don't uh, go to our learning community, you still can also can uh, follow our MOOC. Please uh, look at our website for the dates. It starts in September. And last but not least, please spread the word about this important and interesting project, Multi-Include, because inclusive education is very important uh, 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 because uh, too many people are dropping out in our society and in our uh, educational system. So that's why this uh, project uh, is about. So, um, Edward and I are, uh, uh, want to say thank you. And, yes, thank uh, you. Uh, and also thank you to Aminata, to Vinnie, Karim, uh, Hannah, to uh, Rudy, and, and, uh, and also for the audience. So, hi. Bye. 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 Thank you.